topic number three, product placement. In an era of TiVo and other digital video recorders, more and more people are skipping over traditional commercials. As a result, advertisers are seeking other ways to show off their products. The latest fad is product placement, where a product or brand appears or is discussed in the show itself. Last year, there were over 100,000 paid product placements on network television. But as the product placement frenzy grows, many are worried that it is changing what we see. Scripts are being tweaked to increase the number of placement opportunities. Add a scene at a Burger King, pass around some Junior Mints, or drink a Pepsi. Worse yet, product placements are starting to appear on new shows. We're not just talking about corrupting an artistic vision, we're talking about the possibility of the news we see being determined by the need to advertise products. As a journalist, I find this to be a very disturbing trend. We spent decades establishing our independence and building public trust. In a democracy, the press plays a critical role. We provide the information that is the basis of the decisions voters make. We must never subjugate that sacred task to the desire to sell more colas. I couldn't agree more. As a member of the Fourth Estate, we are honor-bound to uphold certain standards of excellence. Speaking of excellence, the fine folks at Bill's Pizza of 14 Main Street, Hopkinton, Massachusetts, have always felt honor-bound to bring you the highest quality food on the run. They feature a wide variety of pizzas, calzones, grinders, and other Italian specialties. At Bill's, they appreciate your business. And I think we all appreciate the importance of maintaining our journalistic independence. Yes, Pig, you're right. You know, many TV producers think they can slip in a few promotions in a very subtle way, that they really don't change the content much and that the public won't notice. But I think they really do notice. Like they notice how, for over 15 years, EMC's Clarion Network storage system have led the industry in delivering the reliability needed to support demanding mid-range applications. Today's CX-3 offers significant advances in ease of use and new consolidation capabilities. Absolutely. I think the viewing public is too smart for this. They know when they're being pitched a product. Besides, it's pretty obvious when the thing being pitched doesn't fit in. Of course, you'll never have any trouble fitting in at Bill's Pizza. They welcome every customer like they were family, and there's lots of free parking in the rear. Yes, I think we can all agree that product placements have no place on news shows. Just like we can all agree that EMC's file virtualization and management technology, new policy-based archiving across heterogeneous NAS and CAS will simplify and reduce TCO. Definitely. Uh, well, I think so. Excellent. It's definitely special. Special like the specialty pizzas at Bill's Pizza. They're featuring Hawaiian pizza with pineapple and Canadian bacon. Ugh! Topic number four. Peanuts. Ooh, I think I'm gonna like this one. No, I'm afraid not. Well, you just don't like it because Snoopy is such a famous dog. You have to admit, he's kind of cute. No, no, not Peanuts the comic strip. Peanuts the nut. See, I told you I was gonna like it. No, I'm afraid not, Peck. The topic is peanut allergies. Recent research reported in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology reports that between 1997 and 2002, the prevalence of peanut allergies doubled. Currently, about 1% of the population suffers from peanut allergies. Peanut allergies can be quite nasty. Even small amounts can cause severe reactions. It is estimated that 100 to 150 people in the U.S. die each year from peanut allergies. As a result, peanuts have become the new toxic waste of the 21st century. Some schools have even gone so far as to ban all peanut products from their grounds. This is terrible. I hate to see people get hurt, but I love peanuts. Peanuts are my life. I need peanuts. Now, Pack, we all have to make sacrifices for the greater good. Why, I myself gave up small birds. Like Woodstock? Good grief, Pig Nella Hamswell. We're not talking about the comic strip, but now that you mention it, properly prepared, that little yellow ball of fluff would be delectable. Perhaps a nice Kung Pao. I thought Kung Pao had peanuts in it. Ah, so it does. I'm beginning to see your problem. I didn't know you liked peanuts, Buford. Actually, I do. Aha! Uh -huh. I knew your name was Buford. No, no, stop calling me that. This is a serious topic. Please try to... Uh, Wilson? Wilson? Wilson! Uh, well, oh, oh, sorry, Mr. Mauser. I fell asleep leaning on the controls. You guys should really try to pick more an interesting topic. <sighs> well, now that I can see again, I see that's all we have time for today. I want to thank my guests, Packer Derm. Uh, thank you.
Pink's Kit. And Pignella Hemswell. It was a pleasure to be here with you, Beaufy. Now stop that! Sorry. All right, then. Thanks again for joining us for Perspectives. This is Kit Hauser, wishing you all a good day. This has been a presentation of the Feline Broadcasting Company. Stay tuned for Cooking with Bill Goat. Today, Bill shows us how to prepare boot a la orange. Uh, Kit, I think they're still looking at us. Yep, they're definitely still there. Well, maybe if we just sit very still, they'll lose interest and go away.